Okay, so today we're going to talk about conditional probability and independent events. And so consider this example. Suppose Jack draws, draws marbles twice at random without replacement. And that's the key phrase, without replacement, from a population of three red and two blue marbles. And we're going to draw a tree diagram to help us out with this. So it comes along, we have, we draw out here. And we could either draw a red marble or a blue marble. And there's two out of five chances here and a three out of five chances here. Well, if I follow this branch of the tree, I pull the red. I go pull a second one. That second one could be red. And there's only two left out of four or the second one could be a blue one and there's still two blue marbles left out of the four that started. Similarly, if I follow this branch of the tree, I pull the blue one, I could still come along and pull a red marble out where this would be three out of four and I could also pull a blue marble out which would be one out of the four since one was already taken. This is a tree diagram of the situation. And as we consider this, as we look at each of these probabilities, this probability here is really what this two fourths is saying. It's the probability of pulling a red one given that the first one was red. That's what the two to four means. When I go down the table here, that's that's what this probably here means, red given red. But if I would come down this whole row and I multiply them, this ends up being the probability of red and a red. That's these two multiplied. And we'll see that as we continue to do more of these problems. So now, find the conditional probability that the second draw is red given the first one is red. Well, the second one is red given the first one is red is going to be red given red is going to be two out of four. Similarly, if the second draw is red given the first draw was blue, well, given the first was blue, that's this branch, and the second one red is going to be red given a blue is going to be three quarters. Find the probability of having at least one red marble. Well, one red marble happens here, here, and here. So to find that, I can find the probability of at least, probably at least, at least one red is the same thing as a one minus the probability of zero red. And that's simply going to be one minus, that's this branch here, two fifths times one quarter. And that's one minus two out of 20, which is one tenth, which is point nine. So looking at our tree diagram can be quite helpful. Each one of these is an intersection. If I would follow this branch here, that's the probability of blue and red. Whereas this one here is just simply the probability of red given that blue was drawn. And so each of these parts of the tree, you have to make sure you're clear with what they mean. The notation, get used to using it because it is helpful for clarification. Let's try another example. Consider the Titanic. And this is real data from the Titanic. And we have survived, they either survived or they didn't, male or female, and the total. Now find the probability of F being female. Well, there were 470 out of a grand total of two Two zero one, and then B says find the probability of 
than being female given they survive. So now I'm only looking at the survival people. Here's my survival people. Of those people who survived, 344 what out of 711 is the conditional probability. And here's the official definition of conditional probability and it's from your formula booklet. So if I consider that the problem of A given B is the intersection of A and B, that is here. This is the intersection of females and survive, that's the top part, over the probability of B, or of the B, which is survival, which is the 7-Eleven. That's how we can use the formula in this case. And I always remember that it's probably a B at the bottom because it's kind of, this here looks like kind of like a fraction. So that's on the bottom of my fraction. And so conditional probability is this formula here. Now to answer the question, are gender and survival independent? Well, if I consider these two probabilities, and let's get decimal equivalent so we can make sense of these numbers. This is approximately 0 0.21. Now that's the probability of being female. If survival and gender are independent, I would expect this probability to be the same. That means if the fact that I'm female does not affect my probability of surviving, then these should be the same. Or, sorry, the fact that I survived does not affect my probability of being female. That's this pro probability. I want to make sure they're the same. If they are the same, then they are independent. And I can quite easily see that this is 0.48. These are not close. Therefore, not independent. Okay, it the fact that there are females, more females survived, means that they were sending the women and children off the boat first, not independent. If these would have been the same values, then it would have been independent. All right, let's do these last ones. Not F means the males, so that's 17 out of 1731 out of the total. Not female given S. So here's the survival. Not female means male. So that's 367 out of the total 711. And finally, try these last two on your own. Pause the video. Survival given not female. Well, that's male. I'm going to look at this column here. There are in total 1731, and the survivals were 367. And then finally, female and survival, well that's this 344 out of the grand total, 344 out of the grand total. And so we can see that from here, that they're independent, or not independent, because the probability of F does not equal the probability of F given S. Okay, therefore not independent. It depends upon being their survival affected was affected by gender by gender. Um, if this was true then it would be female gender and survival would be independent. And so that's one of the definitions of what it means to be independent. Okay, so now a group of 20 friends play sports. Of the groups 4 curl, 5 run, and 12 do neither. Create a Venn diagram. Here's my curlers. It's a sport. Here are my runners. 12 do neither, 4 curl, and 5 go here. Well, if 
there's 20 people in gen in total. There's 12 already accounted for. That means there must be eight in this region here. Well, here are nine. That means w nine minus eight is one. One must have been counted twice. And so there's three people for curling and four people here for running. And here, there's my Venn diagram. So, find the probability that the person curls. That's the probability of curling will be a total of four out of 20, which is uh, one out of five. Number two, given he runs, then he curls. So I want to find the probability that he curls knowing that he's already run. So only the runners I'm looking at. I'm only looking at these runners. In total, there's five runners. I'm looking for one out of the five. Well, what do I notice about curling and curling from the runners? The same probability. Therefore, these are independent. Okay, continuing along, number four now says, what's the probability that a friend does both curling and running? Well, that's both curling and running is equal to one out of 20. Uh, number five says evaluate PC times PR. Well, PC I know is one fifth times PR, the probability of a runner is five out of 20, which I multiply, I get one out of 20. Well, what I noticed now what I see is that this value and this value are the same. I already knew they were independent. And so the conclusion that I can make, and this is the, what you see in your formula booklet, the conclusion that you can make is that if the two events are independent, then I can straight off multiply them together. And it will be a true statement. This is true. Another way I can explain this whole scenario is I know from conditional probability that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B. If I multiply these here, and rearrange it. I'm going to say the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of B times the probability of A given B. So that's just the conditional probability statement rewritten. Well, but what we know about independence. For independence, what we know is that if they're independent, the probabilities are the same. So the probability of curling is the same as probability of curling giving a runner. So that means that if they're independent, well, this is probably of B, but this probability is the same as the probability of A. And so here's another way to look at my probability being of independence means the intersection of them I can just multiply the individual probabilities, which we also showed was true in part four and five and six. So for independence, this relationship is true. The other relationship that is true for independence is that P of A is equal to all the probability of A happening given that B already occurred. These two scenarios tell us about independence. If they're true, they're independent. Well, and if one's true, the other will definitely be true. So independent events from what our formula book says, A give, 
and B is the same as probability of A times a probability of B. And it means that if B happened, it does not affect whether the probability of A happening. Okay, example here, a pair of dice is rolled, find the probability of getting at least one six. So a pair of dice is rolled here are all my options. And so the probability of at least one six. Well, if we look at all these scenarios here, probably a one six. That's all of these here and all of those here. This is the overlap. So there's a six here and five. So I'm going to get five out of a grand total of 36. Now I want the sum greater than eight. Well, a sum greater than eight is all of these ones here. Okay, that is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of 36. And what this particular example here is highlighting is that sometimes if you write out the sample space or make a grid or some kind of diagram, it can ha quickly find you your answer. Find a sum is greater than eight if a six is rolled. Well, here is where the sixes are rolled. And my eight greater than eight are all these here. And so that probability, well, I only have 11 to choose from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. Oh, that's to choose from. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the eleven is eight out of the six. Now I realize that I wrote this one wrong back here. At least one six. There were eleven of those, even though I don't know why I wrote five. So are the events rolled six and some greater than eight independent? Well, if at least one six, if I call that A, and this event here is B, and this one here is B given A. A sum great. I'm looking for the probability of sum greater than eight if a happened already. So, if the probability of b given a, if this is true, then they are independent. Well, seven divided by eleven is sixty-three, and 10 divided by 36 is 27. So therefore, they are not equal, therefore not independent. Because it definitely, having a six definitely affects your probability of getting a sum of eight or greater. And finally, are these two events mutually exclusive? And the answer is no, because I have all these scenarios here that are happening at the same time. They are not mutually exclusive.